Oh, welcome back. It is uh, still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa as we set an agenda for the incoming administration. Uh, the administration is set to be on board in about uh, 14 days or so, and a whole lot is happening, and um, Nigerians are wondering just how far they would go and what to expect from uh, the incoming administration, specifically from President-elect uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Let's just give a bit of a, a background before I introduce my guest right now. A rise in food prices and the lingering effect of cash crunch are eroding Nigerians' purchasing power as inflation heads to a new 17-year high. But the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, said it has launched a series of consultations and policy reforms uh, to crash rate and boost purchasing power. Now, intelligence reports by many economic and financial firms uh, indicated that inflation may rise by about 50 basis points uh, to between 22.5% and 22.67% in what may be the fourth consecutive monthly increase. I have um, joining me right now international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insights on Plus TV Africa. Thank you. Good morning. All right. Uh, Mukta, analysts uh, seem to believe that uh, inflation may rise by about 50 uh, basis points to between 22.5% and 22.67% in what they have said may be the fourth consecutive uh, monthly increase. Let's start from that. Inflation rate is getting higher. It is just galloping, as it were, right now. So... If you were to advise the incoming administration, what should we be working on specifically to uh, look at uh, food uh, inflation? I think food inflation is mostly caused because of rising cost of energy. Um, and when you talk about rising cost of energy, then it affects uh, the farm products that are moved, especially in the rural area. If you look at the inflation figure, it's, it seems to be like the rural area seems to have more inflation than even the urban area for some time now. And that is because of the rising cost of energy. And when we talk about the rising cost of energy, we're talking about fuel, um, petroleum product, PMS especially has gone up. So in, the, in the rural area, they pay almost 400 naira for PMS. And so that's for me is the biggest challenge, especially when you have a government that should be removing subsidy. So what we should be thinking about, if I were the government coming in there in terms of tackling inflation, you need to look at the productive sector and how you can reject it and bring subsidy into that sector. Now, when I mean subsidy into that sector, I, I mean in terms of bringing social investment, not just subsidy. When we talk about social investment, you talk about healthcare, you talk about education. So if you are able to do that, then what mostly houses spend on food and food, they spend so much time not only on food, on agriculture and also on healthcare. If they begin to have good air care at a cheaper rate, that will reduce their cost of living. And that also could help bring down inflation because that means the money they have in their hands will be able to go further than what, what they have now. But basically, to bring down inflation, you need to look at cost of production. Yeah. And when you're looking at cost of production, you, you begin to look at energy costs again, especially when we don't have power. So definitely on that thing they need to tackle to bring down inflation is power. Then again, they need to tackle the exchange rate um, 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 differences. It's, it's one volatility that has been on for almost eight years. And this current administration was only able to come up with one strategy, one that was the import-export window. After that, there seems to be lost on what to do to bring down this exchange rate. I think the income administration will have to deal with that, uh, that challenge also. So definitely to bring down inflation, we need to think of the productive sector you need to think of subsidy. And when we're talking of subsidy, we're talking about subsidy in terms of uh, building hospitals, social investment, and good schools whereby people don't have to pay for their children to go to private school. That will bring, uh, bring, bring, uh, make them have more money. But the major ways to solve uh, inflation and figure is to bring down the cost of production. And when we're talking about bringing down the cost of when you look at energy, especially that that is being used by industry, that is diesel. Mm. Fortunately, diesel have moved from a height of almost 900 naira today, selling for 70. So they need to still do more. And that's a sector that has been deregulated. They mm -hmm. need to still do more in the area of investment and see when the competitive uh, nature of that sector come in, we could see price drop and that could help bring down inflation. All right, uh, uh, Mokhtar. 
I'm worried about uh, our debt profile. Uh, I mean, there have been series of concerns in the past uh, couple of days. Uh, the budget office boss was uh, in the news, and he also raised concern and all of that. But 17 years after the Paris Club relief, our uh, external debt rose to uh, 41.8 billion naira. And incidentally, the World Bank is saying that uh, or is insisting that Nigeria needs more loans to fund needs. How do we wriggle out of all of this, really? Well, I think um, this administration got it all wrong. Uh, when they started with debt in terms of building infrastructure, we were part of the people that was excited about it. But in terms of excitement was drawn that we're thinking they would do PPP, public-private partnership, and whereby they just bring out those projects, build and operate for 30 years, for 25 years. The government will not be putting so much money on debt. They can have a tax bracket. That company is able to employ people. Those people will pay tax. Now what we're looking at, but what we saw was a government that was bent on just boring to run the project themselves. And so that is why we're in the challenges that we are facing now. Now, how do you get out of this? There are only two ways you get out. Improve your revenue. That's in short one way, improve your revenue. Now, when you look at our cash car, our cash car is oil. Now, oil is suffering from a lot of challenges. The subsidy payment is there. Now, the oil thief is there. So we are not able to again move from there. Then the next one you look at is, okay, let's go to tax bracket. Widen the tax bracket, which is basically very good for you to widen the tax bracket. Now, you want to widen the tax bracket. How are you widening the tax bracket? One question. Are you widening the tax bracket to just have revenue to pay your debt? Or are you widening the tax bracket to have uh, uh, use tax as a means of growing your economy? then your people find employment, they pay more taxes for you, you are able to pay your debts. Those are the two ways. Now, the government really needs to look at it, especially the income okay. administration. Do we just want to widen tax bracket to end revenue and pay our debt? Or widen tax bracket, using tax as a means to get more people into our economy, get more companies, they enjoy tax holidays, mm. and they, they give our people more jobs. Then from the taxes that are being paid by these people, we use it to pay our debt. Then, Looking at the oil sector, what do you do? You fight oil, uh, the oil thief. What technology can you use to fight the oil thief? We need to know how many barrels of oil we produce a day, not assumptionly. Mm. We need to know it's not rocket science. Then after you do that, you look at the subsidy regime. You begin to look at what type of subsidy are we paying? Can we sustain this? How, how sustainable is this? If it is not sustainable, what are the palliative? What are the measures that we put in place to make sure that we bring investment into that sector, create competition into that sector, and bring down the cost of energy into that sector, and then remove the subsidy? All right. are all no rocket science, but you need the political will to be able to do it. All right, Mokhtar, because of time now, let's uh, leave uh, the fiscal uh, policy for a bit, uh, taxation and all of that. Let's talk about our monetary policy, because... Uh, it seems as if uh, we are not really getting our, you know, our NPR, our NPC rate and all of that, right? But let me talk about um, the Forex uh, right now because I'm even alarmed that uh, Nigerian, uh, do you know um, Obasan just time, Ni each Nigerian was owing about 17,800 but the current administration now, a Nigerian owes about um, over 368,000 if you look at our public debt. But for our Forex regime right now, the CBN over time under this administration came up with some measures, you know, to help our forex uh, regime, but it's as though we we were having some sort of a policy uh, mismatch or misplaced priorities or something because we're still not doing well when it comes to our uh, forex reserves. Well, you need to know where the forex reserve is coming. It's coming from our oil, and for the for throughout last year, I think NNPC only remitted. I mean, tens of January and February. After that, they did not remit anything to the into the federation into the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, federation account any longer. So how do we have forex? Because our cash car is oil, so oil thief again reduced, and then they came up with subsidy payments. So that was that's one reason that's why we don't have the, the green bag in our in our reserve like we used to have it. Secondly, uh, we you 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 said it all the maybe the policy the monetary policy. I think they've come up with a lot of um, issues, the RT200. The, the only one that has worked, I think, is the import-export window, that we're able to see the, 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 the results instantly, maybe in one month or two months. We saw the, the, the dollar from a height of about 500 naira drop to 360, 
that we're able to maintain before COVID-19 and other things come up. And then we are we are where we are today. So in terms of managing that sector, I don't think the only way you can manage that sector is to earn more revenue or then attract more investment and that portfolio of foreign foreign direct investment. This administration has not done that. Remember that the monetary policy committee can only come up with monetary policy. The physical side needs to come up with a strategy to attract foreign direct investment and then portfolio investors will all definitely come in because of them. Portfolio investors come in because of the monetary policy, but foreign direct investors will come in because of the physical policy. But you could see that in this current administration, where portfolio investors would have come in because of the monetary policy, all they right. have challenge that have to do with the, the, the exchange rate uh, differences between the parallel market and the government market. All right, and the physical start. side was non-existent. At, as right. Also, we didn't attract them. So in all the means we are supposed to attract uh, efforts into our economy, we don't. We did not, and that is why we have the challenge that we had. All right, Mokta, I, I guess we still have a whole lot to discuss, but we might need to do a part two of this. Uh, time is usually not our friend, but then there's still a whole lot to talk about, uh, you know, and the, the real sector, the manufacturing and all of that. We'll do another take on that, but I, I must say a very big thank you to you for joining me uh, today. I do appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. As we go now, the Event Experience Africa Texas has hosted major stakeholders, event professionals, creatives, and business heads in the event industry since 2019 at the Grand Conference that sets the pace for an eclectic year as professionals in the event industry. Now, since the global downturn, Texas resumed activities post-COVID in 2023 by hosting delegates from across Africa to an excellently planned and well-executed conference uh, themed reset. Uh, this year's team was geared at encouraging and guiding the various stakeholders on growth, pathways, profitability, and accessing new markets in the industry during a recession. I'll leave you with details of that. Uh, Business Insight returns tomorrow. I am Justin Akadonye. See you again next time. Bye for now. Nice. Okay, you look nice in this one. And so that was something that uh, event managers were having to do. The event planning business is highly profitable and can be started with no or relatively low capital. It is, however, pertinent to note that it is a networking-oriented activity. With the progressive comeback from the pandemic, stakeholders have converged on Event Experience Africa to share and connect with other professionals to better position themselves to hear the ground running in 2023. Led by Nigeria's foremost event planner, Funke Bokana Obrute, participants were intensively involved in an informative and unusual experience. They were engaged on drivers for sustainable business growth, curated sessions, emerging innovations and trends in the industry. They need a change of mindset. And for me, reset is either moving backwards, turning around, moving forward, pausing and rethinking. You know, you can either do a hard reset where everything changes or you just do, you reset your mind, you reset your business, reset your life. Um, I would say melting pot, a melting point where everybody can come together to learn, to relearn, and then to just get education, to network. And I saw that there was really nothing for Africa. You know, I go for conferences internationally, um, all over the world. I've spoken, I've attended um, over the years, and I know that it can be very expensive. First of all, getting on the plane, um, buying your tickets, um, getting on the plane, getting the hotel, paying for the conference, and they're very, very expensive. But I just thought, how can we make it nearer for people? People who curate experiences across Africa are the event organizers, event planners, the vendors, and people in the value chain. See how powerful it is to actually put all of these people in one room. It's such an amazing thing. So uh, if I'm to describe it, Texa is unifying Africa and figuring out great ways to make this industry in Africa globally competitive. Right now, the world is actually, you know, the entire touchlight is on Africa right now. Like I said, a lot of times people don't see, the, they feel, oh, it's just, it's just a big actually, okay, it's just a big color, it's just a big style. But truth be told, it's not to. What we do is basically curating a moment, a fashion moment for you. That's what your style is for us. So as much as it's pretty difficult to convince, sometimes your resume and what you've done and, what, and how you've been able to um, 
put your previous your previous brides or your previous groups together just sort of makes it easier. But a lot of times it's convincing them. Texa 2023 was also targeted at corporate stakeholders such as brand and corporate communication activation managers, including experiential marketing companies. Right from your clients, right?